In today's video, we're going to be doing a long range deep dive into the upcoming pattern, talking about why I suspect this summer is going to be unlike any other that we've ever had. We are seeing really, really devastating hurricane activity already during the month of June into July. I don't expect that to seriously slow down, as I do expect that we will see activity throughout July and August into September and October when it's normal. Uh, so I do suspect that this summer is going to be filled with far above average or even historic hurricane activity alongside above average activity, far above average activity in the east already. When you put those two together, uh, that really puts us in dangerous territory to see some truly historic events as far as rainfall, thunderstorms, tropical activity, among other things. Now let's take a look. We're first off taking a look at this model that I've liked a lot recently. You guys might have seen it on the channel, but it is the European AI model. So it's your European model, and then they added some AI to it, and that's what we get here. Um, we see that even over the next 15 days, we're expecting uh, two of the things that we've talked about primarily here, tropical activity and above average activity in the east. Uh, this particular model even brings this system barrel onshore to Texas, and then eventually moving uh, kind of eastward, uh, bringing some activity alongside it, as you can see, for a lot of the eastern states. This is a good example of what we could see a lot of this summer, you know, even if it's not a hurricane, it can still bring a ton of precipitation and can really sway our averages in the far above average direction as far as precipitation. Uh, even, you know, flooding would be a big time concern in a lot of these instances. We continue to see just tons of activity both uh, on our mainland lower 48 United States. Not only that, some tropical concerns here for the Bahamas. So this is going to be a lot of what we see this upcoming summer. Now, I want to take a look at the total precipitation on your European weekly model. This model also suspects that we're going to be in a far above average pattern as far as precipitation and activity in general. As, as it is one of the European models, of course, it does agree. Most every model does uh, think this at this point for the most part. As we move forward with it, this is over the next 10 days. We get a lot of activity in here, uh, east of the plains, and, and mostly where we're referring to in these videos. Uh, we do see that there is areas in eastern Canada as well, seeing this far above average activity. Where in the reds, we're expecting two to five inches, not on an entire month, which for most areas would be above average for an entire month. But uh, we're actually seeing this only in a 10 day period. So you can 3x these amounts, that would be the monthly total if obviously they followed this 10 day period, which it's unlikely that they would specifically. Uh, once we reach towards the end of July, so this is about a month in, uh, we see that the Eastern half of the nation gets filled with these reds where we're seeing three, four, five, six inches of precipitation, uh, especially along your Gulf and Southeast coast where, you know, we do expect a lot of activity here in the month of July historically. But to see 5 to 10 inches for this entire area is on the high end of things for precipitation uh, just over this next month. Now, as we get through a majority of the month of August, we move way up into the 10 to 15 inch amounts for a lot of these areas. Uh, definitely far, far, far above average activity. And this isn't really taking into consideration any specific tropical activity. So this is just what this model is thinking based on the patterns that it's expecting. If you throw a tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane into the mix, uh, all of a sudden we are ramping up these numbers to much higher totals. Keep in mind also that this is a pretty low resolution model, so it's uh, taking a bigger picture look here. And if we were to move to the local local level when we're looking back, uh, you would see a lot more variations here, a lot of higher amounts and a lot of lower amounts depending on where you're at, what county you're in, uh, and among other things. So keep that in mind as we're looking at that as well. Overall, I want to take a look at the European seasonal model as well. For June, I'd actually suspect some below average precipitation in here, which I think most of the European model family disagrees with, so take that with a grain of salt. But we can see a lot of areas east of the plains are seeing above average activity, especially uh, kind of the mid-Atlantic and northeast in a neutral area, and then a lot of your kind of Mississippi River area seeing the most above average precipitation. As we move towards July, however, uh, we do see that the eastern seaboard gets in on a lot of this above average activity. 
as well as the upper Midwest here. So we're seeing quite a few areas. We do still have a little dry patch in here. I'm a little doubtful at this point, honestly. Uh, notice, I want to point something out here. Uh, we see that the Southeast Coast, the Bahamas, the Southern Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, what do you notice about all of these areas? They're all in the above average precipitation. Uh, that is definitely telling me that this model is suspecting far above average tropical activity uh, in these areas across just the month of July. As we move towards August, it's a lot of the same here. Let me backtrack. So August here, it's a lot of the same, even worsening for a lot of these tropical areas where we're seeing uh, figures that are far above average, inches above average as far as precipitation is concerned. Definitely a concerning look. Now, as we take a look at the kind of Gulf Coast, East Coast, and entire Eastern Corridor here, August looks above average as well for most of these areas in the Upper Midwest and Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, South Central States, Gulf Coast, Southeast Coast, up the Mid-Atlantic and into the Northeast here. We are seeing above average activity across the board. So definitely a concerning look. And I do want to, as a bonus, show you guys September, where again, we will have above average tropical activity on this model as well for all basically ocean areas and the entire Gulf Coast, Southeast Coast, and up the East Coast. We see above average activity once again for the month of September here. As we take a look at the temperature pattern, I think what's aiding in a lot of this above average activity is of these cool downs that we're frequently seeing. We do get these warmer times, obviously, but when the precipitation moves in is when we get a cold front along this area that moves in from the side of it. And we do see a lot of this um, across the upcoming pattern. So we see one cool down here, uh, for late next week uh, we get another warm up and then another cool down for the midpoint of july and these are the types of events that really aid and bring us that above average activity in the long term as i've kind of mentioned here this flip floppy pattern and i've talked about this for a few weeks now is kind of what consistently brings in stormy weather uh, versus a more stagnant pattern where we're left with one air mass kind of just staying still that doesn't really bring the activity as much as we do see in these types of flip-flop patterns. Now, as we take a look at the European Extended Weekly model, what we end up seeing is uh, this model does average out really bad sometimes where we see warmth across the board. What I mean by that is it's an ensemble model, so we have multiple members at play here, all putting their prediction into this mean average that we're looking at now. And as we look at the long-term pattern, they all kind of average out, and this obviously has a warm bias. This model has been known to have a warm bias for years. And what we end up with is a slightly above average temperature pattern across the board. What we can take away from it, though, is we see far above average uh, temperatures for the West and then much less for the East. And what this tells me is that likely the West is going to be a lot warmer, and we should see some frequent cooldowns still in the East uh, during the kind of like late the late portion of august so uh what this is this is definitely going to be a look that tells me that we're going to continue to see that activity with these temperature swings as i mentioned earlier definitely something to watch for and i'm going to be watching it here on the channel with all of that being said as we kind of just circle back to the tropics another reason this summer will be unlike any other is this warmth historic warmth in the atlantic i mean try to find the cold spots you have to go all the way to africa maybe here maybe offshore of New England a little bit here as there's some waves of colder uh, waters there or even close to Europe here. Uh, but if you're looking at your main areas of tropical concern, which is going to be in this corridor here, we're looking at far above average temperatures for almost the entire area. And where it's the warmest in these pockets here is almost where it matters the most, in my opinion. As a lot of our systems move off of Africa, and they either move through here towards the East Coast, they move through here to the Southern Caribbean and eventually the Gulf, or they move through here and then out to sea, of course. But regardless, most tracks move them through these very, very warm waters, these furthest above average waters, and that is what's going to really aid in the development of these systems. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.